Dear friends, the topic for the day is optic nerve sheet diameter, fondly called as ONSD by most of the emergency physician and critical care physicians. In an emergency department, identifying the raised ICP is of utmost importance. Maybe as important or even more important than identifying a raised ICP is reassessing the patient to look for how the ICP behaves, whether it is going up or down. For identifying this, we have different modalities. One of the most commonly used modalities is looking for papilledema in fundoscopy. We all know how the raised ICP looks in a fundoscopic image, but we also know how difficult it is to obtain a proper fundoscopic image in an emergency department or a critical de care department where the patient will be lying mostly, it is difficult to position the patient, it is difficult to get a cooperative patient. So these all things makes fundoscopy not an ideal choice in the emergency department. Again, it takes time for the patient to develop a papal edema in the setting of an acute raised ICP. For example, see this image. This image has got a very good, ultra good looking papilledema, papilledema in the fundoscopic image. But the problem is that this is unrealistically crisp. You can hardly find such images in your practice, in your ICU or ED. The next modality that is mostly used in ICUs and not much in emergency department is the detection of raised ICP using intraventricular catheters. Again, this procedure is a costly affair, one thing. The secondly, it is not free of complications. The complications like infections and bleeding is a part and parcel of this invasive procedure. The main disadvantage of this is it is an invasive procedure. Another method that could be used is measuring the opening pressure during an LP, during the lumbar puncture. The opening pressure using a manometer correlate with the ICP. So whenever there is a high opening pressure that correlate with a raised ICP. The results might be good, but the problem here is that this is a dangerous method to identify raised ICP because the patient can cone any time. The usual method that we follow in the departments in ED or ICU to identify raised ICP is usually the neuroimaging. CT or MRI is usually used. For the first time detection of a raised ICP, this could be useful. But the problem is that for reassessment, repeated imaging might not be an option using CT or MRI because we need to transport the patient out of the safe zone of ED or ICU. Again, there is the risk of repeated radiation for the patient. So, seeing the pros and cons of all these methods, we have another method which have evolved and come up recently, which is a point of care ultrasound. There are two methods by which point of care ultrasound can aid in the finding of a raised ICP. One is the optic nerve sheet diameter, which we will be discussing in this session. And the other is the transcranial Doppler, about which we have a different session. The question, why do you want point of care ultrasound to identify raised ICP? Of course, this is a non-invasive method. This is an ultra easy method, which you can utilize in the bedside. Since it's non-invasive, there is no problem in repeating this imaging how much ever time you want. And this helps in the reassessment of patient, especially in the ICU. Again, there is no much risk of radiation in this and you can complete the whole procedure in minimum time. Now the question, there are two methods. One is optic nerve sheet diameter, other is a transcranial Doppler. Why are we looking for an optic nerve sheet diameter? We are concerned about the raised intracranial pressure. But what we are measuring here is an extracranial optic nerve sheet diameter. So what is the, how does that work? For that, we need to know a bit about the anatomy of the optic nerve. 
So if you look at this image, you have got an optic nerve with four parts. The first part is this particular part, which is maybe one to two millimeter in length, which is the intraocular part. Then you have got the intraorbital part. Then you have something called the intracanalicular part. And finally, you have the intracranial part. Out of this, our area of interest is this proximal intraorbital part. Again, coming to another image. The speciality of optic nerve is that the optic nerve is an extension of the CNS white matter. So since it's an extension of the CNS white matter, it is accompanied by all three layers of the meninges, dura matter, arachnoid and pia matter. So if you look at this image, you can see that outside this is the dura matter. Then you have the arachnoid matter and finally you have the pia matter here. And the space between the pia matter and the arachnoid membrane that's called the sub arachnoid space. This particular space is where the CSF flows. So whenever there is a raised ICP, what happens is that there will be an increase of flow of CSF in this potential space and this will result in an expanded ONST. Another thing that we should know about the anatomy is that the sclera, when it continues into the optic nerve, there is something called the lamina cribrosa, which is a sieve-like structure through which the optic nerve emerges out. And this has got some anatomical significance, which we will see in the latest slide. Another thing that we should know in anatomy is that we have two vessels over here. One is the central vein and the central artery. The central retinal vein and the central retinal artery, which runs through the optic nerve. In the course, it, it is along the course of the optic nerve, again, the utility of which we will see in the upcoming slide. One more image which could help us to understand this concept. This is a cut section of an optic nerve. So the outer thing that we have is the dura matter. Underneath that, we have got the arachnoid matter over here. Now. Inside this, what you see, this particular thing is the optic nerve. So, the dura matter and the arachnoid together form the optic nerve sheath. And you have the potential space of the subarachnoid space of the optic nerve here. This particular space is the optic subarachnoid space where the CSF flows. And finally, our area of interest is the optic nerve sheet diameter which extends from the outer to the outer and this is what we measure using the ultrasound. I hope that the anatomy is clear now. So this is the reason why we are looking into optic nerve sheet diameter because the cranial subarachnoid space is a continuation. It, it continues as the optic nerve subarachnoid space. Any changes in the raised ICP will change the optic nerve sheet diameter as well. 